looks like we're calling the meeting of the Northampton Council on Aging to order at 3.31 on January 13th. I don't see anyone who we don't know, so I don't think we have any people for the public comment period. So why don't we just move right on into approval of the minutes from our last meeting? Does someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to I'll approve second. them. Bob, second. Um, any discussion before we vote? Any edits or changes or comments? Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes from our uh, December meeting? Aye. Raise your hand, aye. Thank you. Minutes approved. Um, next, I mean, Marie, I think we're moving into your report. Sure. Yeah, so, um, I mean, top of my report is announcing that Janet is leaving. So I thought we'd just start with that. <laughs> um, tomorrow is Janet's last day. And I know all the staff are, you know, we're all gonna miss, gonna miss you and, um, and have been lucky yes. to have your help all this time since we've reopened. It's been, it's been really good. So I, I thought everyone here would wanna be able to say, there are farewells too. Thank you and best of luck for wherever you're going, particularly in a COVID world. <laughs> well, it's been, it's been um, a great experience. Um, I, um, it's a hard decision, to say that. It's a good team and um, I really enjoyed the time. I, I wish it was, yes, the COVID world al always makes things more challenging, doesn't it? It would have been nice to been here when things were really up and running at 100%. And um, that's unfortunate. And no one has control over that. I can only hope that this latest surge does not hinder all the good activities here for too much longer. I um, feel like we we're just kind of getting some momentum going a couple months ago. And then, so it's tricky. Um, so yeah. yeah, as I could say, it was a hard decision on my end. I am, um, I, I do have another job already. Um, I, you know, struggled with this, but I really realized something I think in myself that I really, really missed um, working with the disabled population. Um, I have a job as a program director working for um, adult foster care and shared living for um, various disability population and also going back to some brain injured folks who I, was my last job, which I absolutely loved. So I feel like it's, um, a better fit for me in a lot of ways. Um, looking forward to it. It's more of an expansive role, kind of getting to, to grow the program in different areas um, with shared living, which I love. It's, it's, again, getting folks out of more traditional residential structures and into really community integrated family settings, which I'm all about. So um, I think it's going to be a good fit for me. That's great. We'll miss you. Anyone else? Any other comments? Want to say anything? Janet, thank you for all your hard work. Very, very much appreciated. Wish you all the best. Thank you. And I, and I caught you at the food pickup, Janet. You did, so Bob. Good luck. Thank you. I'm going to miss your enthusiasm and get your curly pair back. That's all. <laughs> I, I, one of these days, I know, I was teasing Jean. I said, she'll see me on the streets of Northampton when I'm, I'm naturally curly. And she'll say, who are you? <laughs> One of the, I, I, my paths, our paths will cross. I'm not, I'm not going far. So I, I truly believe that I'll see a lot of you out and about. So that's great. Well, thank you again. And we will miss you. Thanks, Cindy. It won't be long before you can join as a member. Not long at all. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that, Mr. Dion. <laughs> you're, <that>. you're welcome. <laughs> I, I, I think we should look at that as something to aspire to. As no, opposed absolutely. To, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Our golden years, yeah. Right. Exclusive club, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, retirement. Especially these days, Thanks. right? That's something to really be thankful for. So Definitely. tell us about vaccine mandates and temporary closings and yeah. So yeah. So um, you know, the city was um I think, you know, over the last week or so, um, maybe a little longer, trying to figure out what what was going to be done with city departments. Um, and um, we, we started a little bit before um, the announcement went out for other departments. Um, 
So um, it's, you know, it's basically um, they're anticipating the surges, um, you know, it's a steep incline and going to be a steep decline. So hopefully it will be over by uh, February 14th is sort of the tentative date set for return. And, um, you know, in the meantime, staff are, you know, we're, we have some staff here um, uh, and then staff working at home mostly, um, you know, returning calls and um, working on the marketing and programming planning and things like that. So, um, and, and doing dispatch for, for the transportation. And so, you know, social services um, calls and things like that. So, you know, we, we didn't have a ton of people coming in. Um, we have, we still are, you know, have lots of people picking up lunch, like 29 people today, I think picked up lunch. So, um, you know, mostly what, who, you know, who this is affecting is people who were going into the fitness center and the pool hall. So, um, you know, we are getting uh, the mayor, the board of health, and we are getting emails from people who are very upset about not being able to go into the fitness center. Um, and, um, you know, some people um, have been extra cautious and other people have felt like they should get to choose and that us closing is really not fair. But um, I think um, the board of health and and the mayor feel, you know, like, like we have that we shouldn't be encouraging people to come out at this time during the surge. And um, so, you know, we're available to help people schedule booster shots and vaccinations and get lunch and get their groceries. And uh, so all the essential things that really people really need um, are still available. Um, and do we assume correctly that when you reopen the vaccination mandate will go into effect? Yes. Yes, and they added the um, booster as part of that mandate. So um, when we do reopen, that will be in effect. And we, um, we have volunteers lined up and tax work off volunteers lined up. And, um, and so, um, hopefully people will have plenty, have had plenty of time to get their booster. Um, and although I did get an email, um, today saying there's, you know, uh, a lot, a lot of older adults who have not gotten their booster. So, um, <laughs> might be an incentive. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, we will be, we'll be more prepared for how that's all going to roll out once we get closer to reopening. And um, let's see, did you, any other questions about that? Uh, Marie, any of the payments that were made for the fitness for uh, next month will be rolled into the following month? Um, yeah, I think we probably could figure that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, if people paid for a service that now they can't use, they may for a whole, have... For a whole month, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they just have, a, have banked a month's worth of payments when the place opened. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. And so then next is... Um, I. Um, there have been, you know, there, there have been some delays with the flooring, um, and not because of supply chain, it's actually been because of COVID. So, um, the materials are, the materials are in and they have, um, been treating them to be ready to install. And so hopefully next week there'll be, um, a meeting with central services and me on, on, uh, with the contractor on scheduling how it's going to work uh, in the lobby, and that hopefully it'll be done by the by the time we reopen. I was going to say that would be an upside to being closed is that they will, should be able to work more quickly without impacting people. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, and um, I did get some input from Owen Wormser 
um, from Local Harmony, but it, it's, I, I think um, I misunderstood that his, um, his capacity, I, I was hoping he'd be able to offer more, but um, so I, I got another referral to um, the person who did the trees downtown for the city. Um, so I'm hoping to con connect with that person um, so that we can talk about um, what kind of trees might be good in the lobby and plants. Um, and then the next thing is the service incentive grant funding. So I did put in a very robust proposal for that, for the uh, care package and marketing, and uh, we were denied and I asked why, and they said that they were inundated with applications and um, Northampton being, you know, um, more fiscally sound than many places, um, it makes sense, you know, and I, I said, I'm, I'm glad that it, that the money went to the places that need it more than we do. So um, I think we will probably try to do something. Um, you know, I did get um, donations for, of masks and hand sanitizer from the Board of Health. So we will we'll either put together something that we give out um, in the same way that we did before, like through food distribution, um, like at Salvo and through Grow Food Northampton at the Housing Authority, or, or we'll um, do that and add things to the food distribution we're doing here. Um, so, you know, we, we can put together a little bit of funding to do that and, um, but, uh, you know, I, it's, it felt a little, I was a little relieved because it just felt a little bit, um, a little daunting in the middle of this surge to be trying to plan to do, um, record radio ads and, and, you know, all of that. Um, so, um, maybe for spring, we'll plan on putting together a, a resource guide that we can get out with some kind of care package. Um, oh, and then, uh, the virtual, senior center project, um, you know, we've, we've been, it's, we've been really um, slowed down by a lot of the recent developments with the surge, but I, I think, you know, our partners are, um, have been less responsive than I'd hoped to meetings and um, feedback and sort of planning. And so I, I think, you know, we're, we're going to keep trucking along on that, but um, the survey, um, I did, um, I was looking at the responses. We've only had 22 people participate. So um, I'm hoping that we can get some more responses um, because uh, I, think, I think it would be helpful to know more in more detail what people are looking for. Um, but it's a start anyway. Um, and the, the hybrid cart, uh, you know, we were planning to start hybrid programming um, in, in January, but, um, you know, there was sort of a perfect storm of the surge and um, supply chain issues that we, we didn't get the equipment, um, but it turned out to, to not matter because we closed. So, but we, uh, I hope by the time we reopen, we will have the cart um, and we'll be able to stream stuff that's going on on site um, to people who wanna get on it virtually. Um, uh, let's see. And then the Agent Dementia Friendly Initiative. Um, so we, I have a meeting scheduled with steering committee for the 27th. Um, to review the, um, the community assessment report that PVPC has put together with feedback and um, over you know, a couple of sessions um, and the mayor has you know, reviewed it before he left the, uh, David Narkowitz and um, we'll be planning for the goals that we're gonna try to achieve and getting you know, sort of starting to ramp up, trying to get working groups formed so that we can chunk out the different um, areas that, you know, sort of what we're going to do around uh, educating the business community, um, city departments, um, you know, all the different goals that are involved and, and what kind of working groups we need to put together with, um, 
you know, residents, you know, sort of a mix of um, people from different parts of the community and organizations that, um, you know, like the Y was involved and Northampton Neighbors and so um, Cooley Dick. So that's exciting because I think people, um, we could use a project <laughs> and, um, and, and something, you know, a couple, a couple different groups working on this, we could actually, you know, kind of pick off the low hanging fruit and get some real, real thing, um, progress made. Um, and the best practices, uh, project, which, which really is sort of a review of all, uh, policies in the city. Um, plus I've, I added in um, putting together some templates for self-assessment for city departments so that they can sort of assess how age-friendly their practices are. Um, so it'll be good to have a tool that we can give out as well. Um, let's see, the annual report for EOEA is, um, we've, I've got, everyone's been given an extension. So I have till the end of the month for that. And, um, and that's for last fiscal year. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see what that looks like because it's basically a report on everything that we were able to do uh, during the pandemic when we were closed down and for the few, man, actually not, none, none of the time that we, we were in person will be, will be included. So. Uh, it's not, I, I don't anticipate it being uh, incredibly accurate because um, a lot of participation happened online and, and wasn't trackable. Um, let's see, coffee shops not obviously opening yet and um, fitness centers closed. I guess that's pretty much it. I've covered all the the hybrid stuff is so um i don't know if there are any questions about any of these things um, marie how do we make out with the pos system for the coffee shop oh it's still not done because of supply chain issues <laughs> <laughs> we're still waiting for the printer for the receipt printer um but um staff assistants have been working on the the point of sale system um and working out any glitches. And so I, th I think we'll be good to go once, once we reopen, we should be able to um, train volunteers. And it's, it's very simple um, and should be really user-friendly. So that's great. Um, yeah. And um, I just, I'll just add one thing to that, Bob, that um, I know um, Megan in particular, staff assistant has been working on creating really user-friendly manuals for us. Um, <laughs> So that's really good. So they're like, she gave it to me. So I was, you know, which was, if I could understand it, you know, it was very great. She's so, like showing screenshots and really like, this is what you should see. This is how, so I think it's gonna, as, as Marie said, it is pretty user-friendly. And I think with the help of the staff assistants creating those manuals, it will be pretty, pretty, should be a pretty good learning curve for folks, for volunteers. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, we, if we have our new flooring, um, we, we won't have our new furniture uh, yet, but we should be able to, um, with our new flooring, definitely we'll extend the cafe seating out into the lobby and um, hoping to get more. Um, we have one sample, one chair that the uh, furniture dealer um, had delivered here so that we could try it out and um, there should be more coming. Um, so, after the surge, you can all come and sit in it and try it out. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, right now I'm just trying, I'm trying to, um, you know, just meet with staff and uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a hard time, um, but I think everyone, you know, has been very anxious about the surge and it's been very, trying and and worrying about patrons and i think it's it's good to have a little just a little break to um recoup and plan for all the things we're gonna start up hopefully when we reopen so 
Thanks. Any other questions or comments for Marie's report? Janet, your final report with us. So um, as Marie said, you know, um, recruitment goes well. Um, obviously, a lot of things are on hold as far as um, you know, bistro and coffee shop, although folks are lined up and ready to go. So I don't feel that there will be a, a delay due to lack of, of uh, patrons willing to help out. Um, plenty of vaccine screeners. I know Cindy, you had offered up and we may be reaching out to you at this point. We got a lot of the tax um, work off folks oh, great. to get that, Perfect. which is great. And then some other volunteers as well. A few of our ambassadors are like itching to do some stuff. So a pretty good crew at this point, um, lined up and ready to, to take that on um, when we reopen. So in pretty good shape there. Um, you know, the volunteers have, you know, volunteers have just been great. You know, I, that's one of my parts of my job. I'm going to miss a lot is working with the, all the volunteers, wonderful group, and they've, they've all really stepped up. So even I think that's pretty stable. Um, the technology piece is in a little bit of flux. Um, our still working with the community action program, but Stacia, um, our intern who had been working with us um, in this latest program, she actually, well, she was supposed to end the end of January, but she technically ended kind of this week due to the surge because we tried to do some one-on-ones and it's just, it's, it's really tricky with trying to keep the social distancing and the amount of, of hands-on that people yeah. really need is just not warranted right now. So we canceled the last couple of weeks of appointments. Um, and Stacia's really, she was fantastic, but she's really moving on, looking for more of a full-time, kind of a more permanent kind of role and, and upping her her game a little bit, but she was fantastic. Um, really nice young woman. And I think everybody really enjoyed working with her. She, and she really, um, I really set, think she set the bar really well as far as the expectation for the type of person that we want helping out folks with this tech program. I said, it's one thing, you know, you want someone who's tech savvy, but I think even more so it's important to have someone who's patient and kind. And oh yeah understands the different levels of individuals coming in and the different needs and just kind of rolls with it. And she was that person. Um, so we're working really closely with her supervisor, Tess, at the Community Action Program. And I think Tess has a really good understanding too, that that's the type of person we need. So she has um, found someone else that she believes will do a really good job and could kind of pick the ball up again. Um, the timing is actually probably pretty good. She said the individual might not be ready to go until early spring. Um, but given that we're on pause, um, it might work out perfectly. You know, if it's, she said March, and I said, that's probably right about the time that, you know, we'll be getting up and running and getting things going again. So um, the baton has been passed to Marie for now to work with, with folks there. But I, I, I think, especially working with the supervisors there, we were meeting weekly on Zooms and kind of talking collectively as a group. And I think she has a really good sense of um, the program, but also the type of individual, you know, that's necessary and needed for this kind of role. So um, I, I think she has someone in mind. She's pretty um, selective around. And, um, and, and it was funny because I have to say that Stacia, the student, in our last meeting this week and talking about it, it's funny to see Stacia has grown very, um, very attached as well and very protective because she was kind of like, well, make sure make sure that the person knows this and make sure that, you know, they're aware if they don't hear well. And, and you know, like she's adding all these little cute little tidbits, which I thought was really lovely. Um, so I said, well, maybe she'll have an opportunity to do a little hands-on training with the individual and kind of as a transition, which would be awesome. So, um, so that's where that stands. It sounds, it sounds good. I mean, the, the potential for having a, a replacement I guess, I guess on hold is the operative term today. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing is, is that the, the community action program is really, especially the, the supervisors I've been working with are really excited about this program and committed to kind of keeping that collaborative collaboration going with the senior center, you know, whether it's, Great. you know, so they, they understand how important this is and how much growth there can be and maybe even developing this more with a larger amount of students in the future. So I think that's that groundwork has been has been laid too, which I think is really, really good. So that is good. Thanks. Sure. Anyone have any questions or comments for Jen's report? Yeah, I'm I'm um, I mean, I, I'm I'm feeling like because of the surge, like and because of the transmission rate, it's a little it's a little risky to try and provide that kind of training right now, but I, I do, 
I don't want to say that we can't help anyone at all. Like if they, they really need um, to get connected that like, I, I want to try to figure that out um, to get somebody an iPad. Um, uh, but we may just not be able to do like the one-on-one -on -one training in person. Um, no. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we will, we will be doing, um, you know, like the ARP taxes and things like that will happen. And so like, if we can find some way to modify how we're delivering a service, that's what, that's what we'll do. But hopefully, you know, we're just going to be a month, a month in this surge. And then maybe at the end of that month, we will be able to kick in with, you know, people could come here and, and meet with a staff assistant or something, you know, we, um, or, um, now that we'll have the booster mandate, we, we may have some volunteers who are willing to, to do that. Um, I, I think there was, there was hesitancy about that with some of our volunteers before. So. Understandable. Yeah. Let's hope that it, that the booster mandate has the, the desired positive effect. As opposed yes. to negative. Yeah. Um, any old business that we have? Anyone? I, I, I just jumped right over the announcement section. Does anyone have any announcement that they wanted to share? Hi, Jean. Hi, I am sending out uh, an email to all the artists that were selected um, for the next um, upcoming year today. And um, we are, we postponed the artists for January and February because of for obvious reasons, just so yeah. that the shows could again be, we had initiated the in-person shows. And um, and so if we wait until, we just move the, the January and February artists to um, March and April, and then we'll start the new ones the next so month. You're able to fill out the full year? Oh yeah, we get like tons of people who apply. Perfect. Um, yeah, so, no, it's, it's, it's like- a good problem it's, to have. Yeah, it's painful, you know, because you have to turn people down. But um, but we get lots of lots of that applicants. That's great. Yeah, it is wonderful. Yeah, it, and it's it's probably you know it's disappointing for them, but we want their work to get seen. So yeah, makes sense. So. I'm sure they wanted to be seen too. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Are they making sales to Jean the artists that put their things up do they tend to have quite a few sales oh uh, yeah i mean they it, it, some of them do i mean it depends on some people list their work for for sale and some people put not for sale because there are things that they've collected over their lifetime mm -hmm. and they're sort of a, a personal retrospective you know um but uh people and and i do ask that um you know, I, that since we don't we don't take any percentage and we don't charge anything to apply, that if people make sales, that they make a contribution to the friends of the senior center. I think that's fair enough. It's a good idea. Great. Anyone have any other announcements, comments? Any new business? Any items that you want to see on the agenda for our next meeting? Other than hopefully closer to a reopening date or some sense of how it's going. Well, what, hopefully we'll, yeah, hopefully things won't have changed and we'll be able, we'll, our next meeting will be a week, a week before we reopen, I think. Yeah, and hopefully by, hopefully you'll be, you know whether you can reopen. Yeah, um, right. I mean, based on what they're, what they're anticipating, you know, but they don't, you know, they can't be certain, but I guess the sure. 10th, yeah, it would be just a, a few days before we would be reopening, so. That's great. Anything else anyone wants to discuss in the new cat business or agenda, as I say, second last call for agenda topics for their next meeting? Um, there is one thing that I wondered about was whether um, in order to increase like participation in our group, whether we could just ponder whether or not to um, put the the notice for the meetings um, in one of the email blasts to the people who um, get the emails from you know the from from the senior center. Um, I noticed that Gwen Agna 
had posted um, the Zoom link and the agenda for this for the um, school committee meeting. She's a new school committee member on social media and on her own social media. And it, so I thought, you know, we don't need to send it out to the whole world, but to the people who um, who we already connect with with emails, I thought it might be a good idea. Sure. Yeah, we could do that. Um, and try it, see if it if it helps to get people to join, um, just to come and listen, to see, to, to hear about what's new and, or are you saying to join? Um, no, I just, just so that they know about the meetings. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. They, we, they, you know, so we can yeah. maybe have some public to comment. Yeah. Yeah. I think and it, it does get it, glossed over in the Chronicle. Like people, yeah, don't, yeah. don't see that. I think it's also, I don't know if you guys have run this trick, you don't have to give send give people a link. You simply give them the Zoom website and just give them the meeting and participate meeting ID and the pa password ID, and you don't have to worry about a link. You just go to the Zoom site, and that's how I got onto this one. Right. It saves the link issue. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, so I will make a note to remind Nancy to add that in for the February meeting before the February meeting. Right. Is there okay. anything with the new mayor uh, as far as knowing what it, you know, if she's a um, been to the senior center or have, have been involved in it or anything? Well, she's been on city council for, for a very long time, the chair of the city council. So um, yeah, she's been to the senior center. She's, she's been very involved in town for a long time. Many Space. different initiatives. I went to the inauguration, you know, that big super spreader event. Um, and um, it, it was really um, lovely. It was a lovely event. And um, it was, you know, small, but um, I don't know if any of you nice. watched I, it. Yeah, I, I watched it. I, I think it was, it was nice. It was well done. Yeah. Appreciated it. So it was, it felt yeah. odd to be at a distance, but it's small, but transition yeah I, was, I, no, I have high hopes for her she seems great she is i was very surprised that buzz chapman former mayor buzz chapman was there he was yeah. one of my former bosses <laughs> yeah he was mayor for a year right no a term a term a term was two he was a the term was two years then and he was the mayor for two years oh okay i just remember they said the year the years yeah it was it was a brief stint as mayor. Yeah. If there's no other business to come before our group, then we can adjourn. Okay. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So so move. Move. <laughs> and second, and now don't speak all at once, guys. <laughs> second. Okay, great. We are adjourned. See everyone right. next month. Stay warm and stay safe, I think is the operative term. You too. Hey, Mike, before you go, did you get my message about the sand and salt? I did. Thank you. Okay. All right. Oh. I never know, Colin.